everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Big Bang Theory number 13 to see how accurate all the science and technology in the TV show really are. Good choice. Yeah, now move it down to your email icon. Yeah, the, the little envelope. What do you mean, what does it look like? It looks like an envelope! <laughs> Computer, don't use it. It's it's stuff like this that really gets you to understand that like, it, like your parents have learned nothing in the past 20 years. I mean, because I've spent countless hours trying to explain to my mom how to use the simplest functions. I mean, because when you're trying to explain to your parents like how to use technology, it, it's a real test of how well can you teach and how well can they listen i will try my best to explain things to my mom about like the easiest functions that a five-year-old can figure out on their phone like she'll ask me like how do i use the camera on my phone I'm like you click the button that looks like a camera and then she's like where's that i was like it's never moved like since you bought this phone it's been in the same place this whole time it's the same way you use it and she's still it just, it, it, I really don't know if our parents ever had to explain to our grandparents something similar to this ever. Like, I, I don't know like if there's any sort of advancement that they had to go to their grandparents and be like, hey, this is how this works. Like, I really feel like this is more than ever our generational problem. Like, there's a, that, this internet and technology has made the biggest gap, like the biggest generation gap between any other generations who have ever lived on Earth ever. I had a great idea. You know how we're always having to stop and solve differential equations, like when you're doing Fourier analysis or using the Schrodinger equation? Now, Howard doesn't. He's only an engineer. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. I, well, first of all, I don't want to bring Howard down, but I really don't want to bring Sheldon up. However, I would like to say that since I've graduated college, I've never had to use a Fourier analysis. Or, and But to be honest, I don't think Sheldon has either. Like, I don't know why they have to do it by hand, because now there's enough computers and the technology already exists for you to just put, like, in the inputs, and that'll just click calculate or go or submit, and it'll give you all the values you need. Like, there's really no need for you to ever do it by hand. This was invented not just, well, it probably was a little bit to be lazy, right? But it's also because it eliminates human error. You don't want to be that guy who wakes up in the morning and he's like not feeling as good. So if you're really tired and you're doing like really intense math problems, you don't want to mess up. Instead, you just want to put in like one, two, three, four over five, six X, like just put in variables and whatever you need and the computer will give you everything you want it to. Even for electrical engineers, we have this program called P-Spice, which I don't know if it's used as much anymore, but you literally have to just put in like um, connect like a like battery here resistor here inductor here and put in the values of each of those like resistance and inductance and the capacitor you just tell the computer how the circuits organized and then you just click a button and it'll give you everything you need for every analysis ever like you never have to use any sort of like by hand equations ever the only time i could see you ever having to even get close to that is if you're doing like really really intense research but i mean even then like i I can't think of a scenario where you would ever want to do a Fourier analysis that's not already like easily generated by a computer. Okay, let's try this one. Spherical Henkel function. Hold on. That's it! <laughs> Eureka! Really not like that hard to make an app. Like it's pretty okay i guess it's one thing if i say it but i mean even in general like to actually create an app and then test it out on your phone it's become pretty rudimentary because it's like right now if you want you can go to like mit like app maker i think that's what it's called i'm not quite sure but it, that website really breaks down how to make an app for android devices and it's like it really explains everything you need to know to create a very very simple app and for one like this it's not that complex it's just recognizing handwriting in fact, handwriting analysis is so widespread that even your bank uses it like every day. Instead of like actually going to a bank to cash a check, you can just use the camera on your phone, take a picture of it, and it'll pick up all the numbers that somebody has handwritten and you can deposit money that way. 
Right now what Howard's doing is called alpha testing, which is pretty much you're testing your app inside of your own company. And once it becomes successful to a point where you think, all right, let's give it to some new people, you begin what's called beta testing. And beta testing is where you give it to a very select group of people who are outside of your company. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to you want them to give you feedback on if there's any bugs with your app, if it's like laggy, um, like what works well with it, what doesn't, because as a designer, there's only so much that you can see, but you want to get someone's outside perspective, and that's why beta testing is done for, I mean, all sorts of things. Like uh, video games is a big one, but also like websites and um, applications just like these. Like beta testing is very important, but it always comes after alpha testing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just gonna stop it right there because I don't want to hear that sound anymore. That's a real instrument, by the way. Like, that's not just something that's made to annoy people. Like, a theremin is a genuine musical instrument, and it's one of those few instruments that's like, it's a legitimate electrical instrument. Many people think that an electric guitar is an electrical instrument, and it's not. Because in a electric guitar, it's just a regular acoustic guitar plugged into an amplifier. In the case of this theremin, it's the electricity that's actually producing the sound. Sheldon looks like he actually knows how to play this instrument, which is really weird. Like, I read somewhere online that all the instruments that the characters play, like Leonard plays the cello, Sheldon plays the theremin, and Amy plays the harp. Like, I I'm pretty sure that they all know how to actually play the instruments in real life, but that could just be like a fun myth. You have one hand that controls the volume, and then you have another hand that controls the pitch, and together they make this really annoying dumb sound that for some reason somebody enjoyed playing at some point in time. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's all I got for this Big Bang Theory video. If you want to see more of the Big Bang Theory, just go ahead and comment it down below. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. I hope you guys found some value in this video. If there's any other sort of like TV show or movie you'd like me to watch, put that in the comments as well. Until next time, you guys, stay fresh and stay golden.